So far, uh, we've looked at two forms for writing a linear equation. We've seen the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and we've seen the point-slope form, y equals m times x minus h plus k. Let's uh, do a quick recollection of what these things mean. Okay, m in both cases is our slope. All right? So in both of these cases, m is the slope. Uh, with the top one, with the slope-intercept form, b, or actually 0b, is our y-intercept. Okay? That's the point <clears throat> at which our line is going to intersect the y-axis. And then over here, we still have m, that's still our slope, but now we have the letters h and k in there, and what h and k stand for are the x and y coordinates, respectively, of uh, any point on the line. Okay? Any point on that line at all, it has the x-coordinate h and the y-coordinate k, and we can write this point-slope form. And then if we wish to afterwards, we can distribute the, the slope and combine our like terms and get the slope-intercept form of the equation. So these two forms of the equation are extremely closely related, and you can get from one to the other really, really easily. All right. One last form of the equation that I want to teach you, and that is the standard form. Personally, I'm not a fan of the standard form. Uh, the only reason I'm bringing it up is that you're going to see it a lot. But it's not something that, is, uh, uh, that I feel is particularly all that helpful. Uh, what the standard form is, it's something times x plus something times y equals something. This, this plus will frequently be a minus, or you can think of b as being a negative number either way. Okay? But <clears throat> a, b, and c are always integer values. We don't use fractions there. Uh, if, if we do have a fraction, then we would just multiply both left and right sides by the denominator to get rid of the denominator and have whole numbers or have integer uh, values for a, b, and c. You, you, if you have irrational numbers for a, b, and c, well then you're, you're just in bad shape. Uh, you can't use the standard form of the equation. You have to go back to slope intercept or point slope form. Um, but so let, let's look at a couple of examples of the standard form of the equation and uh, see what we can do. Uh, first off, here's one. We have the equation 5x plus 2y equals 12. Okay, and I want to graph this, and uh, so I'm trying to think, okay, how can I graph this thing? Well, the easiest thing to do is just convert this to slope-intercept form. And the way you convert it to slope-intercept form is by, uh, is by just solving for y. Okay? So let's solve for y. First thing we would do is we would uh, subtract 5x from both sides, and we're going to get 2y equals negative 5x plus 12. Okay? And so uh, now this is 2y equals negative 5x plus 12. So don't look at that and think that you're done yet. Negative 5 is not the slope. We are not done yet because now we need to divide uh, everything that we see by 2, okay? And that's going to get us y equals negative 5 halves x plus 6, and that I know how to graph, okay? So now I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go to the point 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and every time x, okay, my slope is negative 5 halves, okay? And remember, the slope is the difference in y divided by the difference in x, okay? And so that means as x increases by 2, y is going to go down by 5. So x increases by 2, and y goes down by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x increases by 2, y goes down by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now I can see how this line is going. It's uh, going to go right through 
these points there. Okay? And uh, let's just verify that this is right. Uh, we're going through the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is the point 4, negative 4. If I were to uh, replace x with 4 and y with negative 4, would this work? Well, 5 times 4 is 20. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. 20 plus negative 8 is 12. So this point's on the line, and that's making me feel pretty good about all three points being on the line. Uh, let's look at another example. x minus 3y equals 8. Well, let's do the same thing. Let's uh, uh, subtract x from both sides, and we get a negative 3y equals negative x plus 8. And now I'm going to divide everything by negative 3. And I get uh, y equals 1 third x, uh, oops, not plus, minus 8 thirds. Or I guess I could write this y equals 1 third x minus 2 and 2 thirds. Uh, now, I'm not looking forward to graphing this because 2 and 2 thirds, see, that's going to be 1, 2, and 2 thirds is going to be like right around there, but it's hard for me to get exactly what that is. One nice thing about the standard form of the equation, maybe it's the only nice thing, is uh, it's very easy to get both the y-intercept and the x-intercept, okay? The y-intercept you would get by just setting this equal to zero, and you'd have, well, negative 3 times y equals 8, so y equals 8 divided by negative 3, or negative 8 thirds. And the x-intercept we can get by plugging zero in for y, so we get x, oh, x equals 8. So that tells me what the x-intercept is. And so instead of starting from the y-intercept, I can start from the x-intercept. So uh, let's do that. Let's go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This point right here. And now I can use my slope of 1 third as uh, x increases by 3. Whoops, can't go in that direction. So as x decreases by 3, y is going to decrease by 1. Decreasing by 3, y decreases by 1. Decreasing by 3, y decreases by 1. And so now I can see how this is going. All right, there is my line. And sure enough, I see that it's crossing the y-axis at 1, 2, about negative 2 and 2 thirds. So good. Uh, one more example here. 7x minus y equals negative 2. Okay. Uh, again, let's just solve for y, and as we solve for y, we would say, uh, I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides, and I get negative y equals uh, negative 7x minus 2. Okay? And so let me just multiply both sides by negative 1, and that would give me positive y equals positive 7, 7x plus 2. Great, I can do that. Uh, that tells me why my y-intercept is the point 0, 2, so I start at 0, 2, and it tells me that the slope is 7, so as my x increases by 1, my y increases by 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's a very steep line. I go to the left one, I go down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And there's my line there. Uh, something kind of like this. Okay. All right. So the last thing I want to do is I want to start with a line. And I want to say, what if I have this line and I want to figure out what the hmm. It's not exactly what I wanted. Pretend that's the y-intercept that's going through the uh, integer value there. So I have this line here, and I want to find out what the, uh, uh, the standard form of this equation is. Okay? Well, 
My y-intercept is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the point is 0, 7, and my x-intercept is the point 4, 0. Well, I can calculate my slope quite easily. Uh, the slope of this is negative 7 over 4, okay? So my slope is negative 7 over 4, and I know the y-intercept, which is uh, 0, 7, so that means b is 7. So that means my uh, slope-intercept form of the equation is y equals negative uh, 7 fourths x plus 7. Well, if you remember, the standard form of the equation has x and y both on the same side of the equation and then the constant alone on the other side. So let's just move our x term over to the left by adding 7 fourths x to both sides of our equation. So I'm going to add plus 7 fourths x here and plus 7 fourths x here. And this is going to get me 7 fourths x plus y equals 7. Okay? Only thing left for me to do is put all of these coefficients in uh, the form of integers. And the way I do that is I just look for any denominators that I have, and I'm going to multiply by that. If I had several denominators, I would multiply by the least common multiple of those denominators. So I see 4 as my denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation, this side by 4, and this side by 4. Okay? And so that's going to get me uh, 7x plus 4y equals 28. And that is, uh, that is the standard form of that equation.